Guys, the future has arrived and it could be on the budget. Hey guys, nothing screams, the future is finally here, unlike a set of touch screens mounted on your wall. And now that could be possible thanks to NS panel from Sonoff, this little fella. But before we're gonna go any further, just bear in mind that this is a very early release of the product. The Kickstarter campaign is about to launch from IT yet, so everything you're gonna see and everything I'm gonna change might be subject to change, especially that IT yet has asked me to provide a feedback about using this panel. So let's get started with this. If the form factor of this unit feels familiar, well, it meant to replace your usual wall switches. It comes with two uh, separate channels and obviously the highlight of it, the LCD touchscreen. To use Sonoff NS panel in your wall, you will require live and neutral wires inside your electrical switch box. I'm unlucky because, well, I'm in UK and I only have live, so all my testing is going to be on the bench as usual. Two buttons at the face plates are connected to relays and can drive the relays directly. Now these relays are rated 2 amps each or 4 amps in total, so this panel is definitely only for switching lights. Hooking up anything else, well, it's gonna get you in trouble. Since it's wall mountable, you're probably wondering how big is the electrical part of it that goes inside the wall. So it's a square in a footprint of 5 cm by 5 cm and 2.7 cm deep. If you want, just go to Google and do the calculations if you want those values in inches. The device boots very quickly and the pairing is done via Bluetooth. It only takes a couple of moments to get it hooked up and you'll be able to start using it. Just to make sure you set the location information in your EVLink app so you would pull the information about your weather and display it on a home screen. The touchscreen is quite responsive and has no problems registering gestures. Now just like in Android, if you pull down you'll get access to menu options and you'll be able to set the screen brightness and the timeout. Now the display itself, well it's not a very expensive panel. The viewing angles are so-so with color fading quite quickly and especially in the low power mode uh, you won't be able to see anything from about 45 degree angle. However, for the most part, you'll be interacting with the device facing just in front of you, so you'll have no problem reading the information. While deep inside, I'd probably love a much better screen. I know that the price of this device is going to be a sticking point and adding, uh, I don't know, an OLED display would definitely increase the price of a device like this. If consumers want to have a chance to buy more than one device, which probably what Sonoff is aiming for, well, they have to keep the components on the cheap. But back to the interface, if you swipe left, you'll get access to shortcuts to your son of devices. You can specify up to eight different devices in your uh, NS panel, which will show up in here. And those can be usual son of devices linked to your eWilink account. Now, a couple of notes here. If you add a smart bulb or LED strip, you'll get an access to a menu including the toggle for the light and also the color wheel and the brightness slider so you could adjust your light to your preference. Very nice. If you have a smart relay to control, those are going to be split into two menus. If the relay is only a single channel, all you get is a shortcut toggle. Tap on it and it will change the state. However, if your relay has multiple channels, then the submenu will open and you'll see all the channels presented to you for individual controls. Lastly, you can also add scenes, which is right now quite handy because this device itself doesn't support a Zigbee bridge. So if you want to control any Zigbee devices via a son of Zigbee bridge, then you'll have to work with a workaround by adding a scene for that control and adding that scene as a controller that will simply act as a shortcut. Swiping to the right opens thermostat menu because this unit actually acts as a thermostat as well. It comes with a built-in temperature sensor and swiping to the right will open the menu allowing you to set different temperature modes and temperature settings. Now it supports cooling and heating so you can set it to your preference. 
and has a handy shortcut to pick between automated modes and the modes in which you can pre-program your heating including different times and different temperatures. Very handy. As per thermostat itself, now this is a fun bit, you can specify which son of device in your Equalink account is connected to your thermostat. So if your thermostat is currently connected to one of the Equalink accounts, simply tap on the menu, add it, and you have a working thermostat in your home. Very simple indeed, I really like what they did there. But this is not just display, it's a dual channel relay, so it comes with all nice options associated with smart relays from Sonoff. So you have access to obviously timers and schedules. Apart from that, the device supports interlocking and inching. Also, it can save the default state of each individual relays and supports LAN control, something that a lot of you probably is looking for. Now, in terms of updates and interacting with different devices, it's lightning fast when in LAN control. Honestly, as soon as I touched anything on my mobile, the changes were already reflecting on the screen. I was super impressed with it. In the Ewelink app, you'll find options to actually configure this device and you'll be able to change a couple of things. First, you'll be able to select different settings for your temperature units, which is handy for US-based customers. Another thing is the device menu where you can add up to eight different devices and customize it per each panel. So if you have multiple panels, you'll be able to specify which devices are being displayed on it. A very nice feature for everyone looking for the local control. By this point, you should get a pretty good idea what this device is all about, so let's talk about weaknesses. First, the sticking point are the buttons. Now, I've mentioned they are a bit mushy. However, there is more to it because you have to press the button directly in the middle for the button to actuate. Pressing at the side of the bottom doesn't do anything and can create a frustrating experience. Like I said, this is a very early unit and I hope it's gonna get addressed in a mass production. Second problem is the built-in temperature sensor. Right now, it is misreporting higher, about two or three degrees constantly, comparing to an array of the sensors I've got at the back. Now, with this having a fixed location, it's a good idea also to uh, implement a software offset for the temperature. So if your thermostat is in a place that uh, gets more sunshine, you can compensate for that. Misreporting of the temperature could be caused by the sensor being located close to the components that heat up a little bit and that heat bleeding out through the gap. Something I hope they can address as well. The third improvement on my list is the lack of the motion detection. It would be really great to have a motion sensor alongside the low power options. That way you can disable the screen entirely and then use the motion detection to turn the screen on and provide the user with the best experience. Lastly, I would like to see a couple of tweaks in terms of a home panel. For example, right now it doesn't show you the actual state of a thermostat. It would be nice to have options that show you or icons that will show you which sort of devices are currently enabled and the state of the thermostat so you don't have to swipe across the screen to access that information. That would be quite handy and I think that would be a quite good implementation. Now that I complained enough, I think it's time to open it up and see what they've done inside. The devices module, which makes it very easy to actually attach it to the existing electrical box. It uses two different screws and then the top panel just slip, simply snaps on onto the unit. Removing the back panel reveals a PCB with a couple of interesting features. First, at the center of the board, we have ESP32 microcontroller which is obviously a step up from the usual uh, ESP8266. As usual with the son of devices, you have also a lot of different GPIO pins exposed, including everything that is needed to flash this device. Even though this panel is limited to 2.4 GHz network, I'm quite glad that they've picked ESP32 because that will open opportunities for creating a custom firmware and having this unit flashed very quickly. What's quite interesting, alongside the exposed development pads, there are three that are being labeled as RY1, 2 and 3, which indicates that these are the relay controls and the version with the three button control or three gun control might be coming soon. I should mention that the unit itself is also available in two orientations, not a square orientation and more a vertical orientation with the same screen size. Looking at the temperature sensor reveals that 
Yes, if the temperature sensor is misreporting, it could be easily moved or extended outside the unit and start to report maybe a better temperature. But what's really interesting on this PCB is the H2 spot, which is not populated at the moment. I don't know what component should go there, however the associated space in the molding indicates that indeed it could be a light sensor or maybe a motion detector, which would address one of my complaints. The other part of the module contains the usual electronics and connects to the main panel with a 8-pin header. It's a nice module design which I like, and inside that part you'll find a transformer and two relays rated at 10 amps each. Just remember that advertised current rating, it's 2 amps for individual channels, so stick to that, but it's nice to see that ITAD actually provides a lot of headroom for safety. Now that you know absolutely everything about this panel, there is one more question to answer, meaning the price. At the time of making this video, I have no access to pricing for this unit, so it's a bit of a guesswork. I would really hope to see this being positioned anywhere between $45 to $60 per unit. I think going more than that would discourage users from buying multiple units. The Kickstarter campaign will soon show us how much units like this will cost, and then you'll be able to decide for yourself whether it's worth your money. For what it's worth, I'm quite happy to have a panel like this available and I can imagine myself having at least two or three of them scattered around the house to help in automation. Especially if ESP sleeping inside will become hackable soon. I would like to thank IT Ed guys for letting me having an early look at the unit itself and provide them with my feedback. If you have any questions or if you have a feedback yourself, leave them in the comments to this video. I will also include the links to the Kickstarter campaign so you could uh, check it out yourself and support the product if you are interested. As for now guys, if you want to know what's going to happen next then follow up on this unit and a couple of other Sonoff products that I have, strongly recommend you stick around and don't go away. You know how YouTube works, not going to explain you that, but I do have a social media account, an array of them where I post random stuff about projects I'm working on and devices I'm working on for review. So I would strongly recommend you to follow me there and start a, a discussion or conversation with me. Thanks so much for watching and see you next time. Bye!